Please welcome Matt Bronger. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. I got married in my 40s. Thank you. Uh, which is just like catching the last flight out of Vegas on a Sunday. Like, oh, thank God. I'm so tired. I don't want to do any more drugs. Can you make soup? Like my twin, Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm also in the Marvel Universe, peripherally, peripherally. I played a tiny, uh, a tiny role. I played a weird scientist in a show called Agent Carter, who was uh, Captain America's creator and girlfriend. Thank you. So a nerd friend of mine was like, hey, man, you know you're in the Marvel Universe? And I was like, well, I'm like Marvel adjacent, like really. And he's like, no, 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 go to Marvel Wiki and put your guy in and Look, I put in two days ago, and I've been laughing for two straight days. And I was like, okay. And see, Marvel Wiki, you put in any character, it shows their picture, their name, and a signature quote. So for context, you put in Captain America, you get Chris Evans, who, mm, that guy's a sweet piece, man. That was a good, oh, probably a teacher and a student in the bedroom, I'd imagine. Just, oh, strong and giving like America at her best. And his quote is no joke. It's like, we're not here to ask for forgiveness and we're way past asking for permission. Earth just lost her mightiest defender, so we're here to fight. And if you're in our way, then we'll fight you too. Mm, strong. <laughs> My character, Dr. Aloysius Samberly. That's his name, Aloysius. Put him in, you get this face. Like, I didn't know the picture was being taken. And my signature quote is, I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah! No one who's doing well has ever said they're doing their best. <laughs> then you knock down all the stuff in the stock room. No, come on, Samberly, I'm doing my best. <laughs> like, I want that on my tombstone. <laughs> I do, because my job is to make people happy when they're sad. And when are you more sad? than visiting a deceased loved one. Like, I want someone to be like, I miss you so much, Dad. It's not the same without you around. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> Who's this guy? Like, I want that. <laughs> you're not doing your best, you're dead. <laughs> Matt Bronger, you're always born, you're a died. Husband, father, if that happens. That'd be amazing, in parentheses, if that happens. Just put that on. <laughs> Who's this guy? What's that? Talk about white privilege. Okay. Um, <laughs> a lot of tense people in the audience. Look, I think the worst kind, if I may, is old male white privilege. Worse than that is old male rich white privilege. Worse than that is old male rich drunk white privilege. <laughs> Because those guys, are the, and look, here's the thing. The great equalizer is we're all privileged when we're drunk, right? <laughs> Everyone's been there. You mean this bar's out of wings. Burn this place to the ground, right? <laughs> you think you deserve things. So I just want to tell you a quick story about the time I saw that level of privilege checked magnificently. I was in a bus in Chicago where I used to live. I was a bartender. I was headed downtown, and I uh, had a lovely black female bus driver. And we passed a bar, fancy pants bar, where a man stumbled out with a florid red face, full head of silver hair, jewelry, a cashmere top coat, and as the bus passed him, he just goes, stop! He's nowhere near the bus stop. <laughs> you can't hail a bus, sir. <laughs> so we all just laugh, right? But the bus driver pulls over and got to the stop. And you know the rule, you know, if it's a half block away, you gotta show your some hustle, like, I'm coming, got a bad hip, but I'm, hold on, you know? Show some, some hustle. And this guy just takes his sweet time, just strolling. So we all collectively roll our eyes. She shuts the door and she leaves him, right? This guy loses his mind. He curses a blue streak, just says horrible things to this lovely woman. And are just like, oh, what a jerk. And the guy at the back of the bus looks back and goes, he got a cab. Now, if I put this in a book or a, a script, this next part, the editor would be like, you got to take that out. No one will believe it. Unbelievable. Would never happen. This happened, Town Hall. <laughs> the cab comes up next to us, like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> dude's yelling at the bus driver. He slaps him on the shoulder, the driver. The driver pulls ahead, jackknifes, cuts the bus off. She has to slam on the brakes. We slam into each other, like, oh my God! 
Bus driver just goes, this mother. That's all she says. <laughs> cool as a cuke. And you, he had to have, like, bribed that guy. It would take thousands of dollars to make this guy risk his medallion and his freedom. That's a crime. And I've known some crazy cab drivers in Chicago. I was in a cab once where traffic slowed down. This guy's like, this much traffic, there better be an accident. Somebody better be dead. And I was like, dude, I wouldn't go that far. He goes, that far, I would go. Like, that guy's crazy. That's emphatic. Even he wouldn't take 4,000 to jackknife a bus. Guy gets out and just nods at her like, checkmate, and goes and waits. And we're silent in the bus, just holding each other's clothes and shaking. <laughs> Little kid, soft as a whisper, back of the bus goes, don't let him in, like so quiet. <laughs> and she puts her hand in the handle, let's go, drives off, leaves her, like, yeah! We're so happy we're meeting each other. You know how rare that is on a bus? April, how are you? Is this your husband? Hi, Malcolm. <laughs> and we just sit back like, whoa, what a, what a story we have for our friends and family now. What a jerk. Guy in the back of the bus, he got another cab. Oh my God. <laughs> this is still going? No. This time he pulls way ahead, right? Like he should have in the first place, gets out, walks the stop. And we see him just half a mile ahead, like a harbinger of death. Just. <laughs> We're so scared. But she does her job. She pulls over, opens the door, and he gets on. He's like, ma'am, you have got some. She doesn't even look at him, just goes, hop, hop, H-U-P, just stops him. Like, with a, remember that guy, Caesar or Cesar, that would take over a dog's mind? Remember that guy? <laughs> that <laughs> dog's like, no, I'm a wolf. No, what's happening? She did that to a man. And she didn't even, all she said was, sir, when you cut off a city bus with a cab, you committed a felony. Now that's a $5,000 fine, a minimum, 10 years in jail. Now I will let you on my bus. I will not even make you pay. But if you say one word, and I mean one word, sir, I will send you to jail. Now not if you understand me. <laughs> uh, and we're all just clutching our pearls, like, oh. Oh, captain, my captain. <laughs> so commanding, such leadership. And utterly defeated, he just nods and gets in the bus and we drive away. And no one got in his face like, whoa, suck it! You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just like, you ever see someone pick a fight and get their ass kicked so bad that you can't even look at them and you're wondering why they're still in the bar? It was like that. And look, I know I look goofy. It pays the bills, but <laughs> There was a guy next to him that looked like Hannah and Barbara got together <laughs> and said, let's draw the goofiest dude of all time. And he, while this man's head is looking at the ground utterly defeated, this guy's looking at all of us like, <laughs> and I'm holding the bar like, stop, stop making me laugh, man, stop it. And the guy finally looks up and the goofy guy just goes, you're so mad, dude, and the bus exploded. <laughs> Champagne was produced. It felt like we saved Apollo 18. I think I kissed three dudes that day, man. Thank you, New York. Yeah. Matt Bronger. Thank you so much. Man. Love you. Love you.